In this lesson, we're going to explore asymptotes for rational functions, and there are going to be three types, the vertical, the horizontal, and the slant. And when you graph a rational function, or any function with an asymptote for that matter, you have to graph the asymptotes as dotted lines because they're going to help you determine the proper shape of your graph. Because remember, an asymptote is a line that your graph will get really, 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 really close to. So the first type of asymptote we're going to look at in depth is the vertical asymptote, and they come from domain restrictions. Okay, so the definition of a vertical asymptote is this. Um, x equals a, which is the equation of a vertical line, is a vertical asymptote if f of x approaches either infinity or negative infinity as x approaches that a value from the left or right. And so let me show you a quick little graphic representation of that definition. And so this is that definition as a graph. Um, the dotted line x equals a is my vertical asymptote. And then I have x values approaching from the right side and from the left side. So that's from the negative side and that's from the positive side. And what happens to the function is as it gets closer, in this case, to uh, a from the left side, the function value gets bigger and bigger and bigger and approaches positive infinity. And so then if the x value approaches from the right side, then the f of x value in this case approaches negative infinity. Now of course these two can be swapped. They can both go to positive infinity or they can both go to negative infinity. All that really matters for a vertical asymptote is that the function value, the f of x, blows up either to something super huge positive or something super huge negative. And so we can look at the most basic example of a rational function, f of x equals 1 over x to sort of see this point. And so I have a vertical asymptote at x equals 0 because my domain is all reals except for 0. Um, and if I look, if I think about um, the x values that are really close to 0, and so if I have, you know, like f of a tenth, that's 1 over a tenth or 10. So if I look at something even closer to 0, like a hundredth, I have 1 over 1 hundredth or 100. So as the x values are getting closer and closer to that vertical asymptote value, then these y values are blowing up. And so that's why x equals 0 is a vertical asymptote. Now to find a vertical asymptote, the first thing you have to do, of course, is find your domain and any restrictions that might be on it because your asymptote is going to come from that pool of restrictions. And then you have to simplify. Um, now don't simplify first and then find domain restrictions because that can cause a problem with your graph later on. So find the restrictions first, then simplify. Now your domain restrictions are going to fall into two categories at this point. Either they're going to cancel out and be gone, or they're going to remain. Now, if the restriction completely cancels out and is eliminated, then what you have in your graph is a little hole at that little point. But if any of the restrictions remain after simplification, that's when you get your vertical asymptote. So we're going to look at two examples, one where it cancels and one where it doesn't. So if I look at the function, y equals x squared minus 4 over x minus 2. That numerator is a difference of squares. It easily factors into x minus 2 over x plus 2. And that domain restriction of x minus 2 ends up canceling, so my function simplifies to y equals x plus 2. Okay, And so I know originally my original function has a domain restriction that x cannot equal 2. right? But graphically what I have is a function that looks like y equals x plus 2, meaning it's a line, but I cannot have the x value at 2, so I have a little hole. I don't have an asymptote, I just literally have a blank spot in my graph where that restriction was. And so then if I look at this example of y equals x squared minus 5x plus 6 over x squared minus 6x plus 9, the numerator factors to x minus 2 times x uh, minus 3, and the denominator is x minus 3 quantity squared, a set of x minus 3's cancel, I'm left with x minus 2 over x minus 3. So this function just works just like x minus 2 over x minus 3, 
my domain restriction is that I can't have x equals 3. Therefore, my vertical asymptote is at x equals 3. And I can graph this one on my calculator to verify that indeed it does have that asymptote. And I graph the original, and it looks like there's a little asymptote at that 3 value. And I can verify that by going to the table and looking for where x equals 3. And at x equals 3, I get an error. So the telltale sign of a vertical asymptote on your graphing calculator is that you're going to get an error there. Now let's look at horizontal asymptotes. And the main thing you have to know about a horizontal asymptote is that it's a study of the end behavior of a function. In our case, it's going to be a rational function. So let's see the definition of a horizontal asymptote. It is y equals b is a horizontal asymptote if the function value approaches b as x approaches positive or negative infinity. And x approaches positive and negative infinity is basically end behavior. So graphically, what this definition says is that I have some function f of x whose y value is approaching some horizontal line as the x value either approaches positive infinity in this case, or in some other cases, it could be negative infinity. And let's look at the most basic example of a rational function with the horizontal asymptote. And that is y equals 1 over x. Super basic. So what happens to y as x approaches positive infinity? And what happens to it as x approaches negative infinity? So I'm thinking about 1 divided by some super huge number like 10 billion or 20 billion or a trillion. And what happens is, is this function value gets super tiny and actually approaches 0. So that means that my horizontal asymptote uh, and for this function is y equals 0. Now in general, every rational function is defined as a ratio of two polynomials. So n of x and d of x are polynomial functions. So if you remember from graphing polynomial functions, the end behavior was dictated by the highest degree term, which means that's the degree of the polynomial. And so in order to determine end behavior for a rational function, all I have to do is look at the degrees of these two polynomials and what they are in relation to each other. And there are three types of rational functions. The first I call top heavy. So that is a polynomial where the degree is higher in the numerator. I have f of x equals x to the fourth plus x squared over x squared plus one. And the degree in the numerator is higher than the degree in the denominator. And in the long run, I don't care about the x squared up here, and I don't care about that 1. All I care about is this. If I were to plug in a trillion for x, these two terms at the end really mean nothing. And the only thing that matters is x to the fourth over x squared. And so um, what this function acts like it's going to act like x to the fourth over x squared, which means it's going to act like x squared. So if I have a top heavy rational function where the numerator degree is higher, then I have n behavior like a polynomial. So this thing's n behavior is going to be just like x squared in that it's going to increase and increase, right? And so there, in this case, is no horizontal asymptote. So top-heavy means no horizontal asymptote, because in the long run, that function will act like a polynomial. The second type of rational function I have is the bottom-heavy type, where the degree is higher in the denominator. So this, for example. And like the polynomials, I can ignore these terms and totally focus on the highest degree. So this function is going to act like x squared over x to the fourth, which means it's going to be just like 1 over x squared. And now I just have to think about this. What happens as x gets super huge, either in the positive or the negative? I get 1 divided by some super huge number. And so that means this graph is going to approach 0. 
So the horizontal asymptote for this one is y equals 0. And that's actually true for all bottom-heavy rational functions. Anything that's bottom-heavy has a horizontal asymptote that's y equals 0. The last type is where the degree in the numerator and the denominator are the same. And so in order to determine end behavior, I just have to look at the highest degree term. That term, that term, that term, that term mean nothing. All I care about are these two terms. And I have to think, well, what does this act like? Well, it acts like 2x to the fourth over 5x to the fourth, which means it acts just like 2 fifths. So my horizontal asymptote happens to be y equals 2 fifths in this case. So when the degree is the same, what I have to look at is the ratio of the coefficients. When I have the same degree, the horizontal asymptote is located at y equals n over d, where n and d are the leading coefficients of the numerator and denominator. Now let's look at slant asymptotes. Now a slant asymptote uh, is just like a horizontal one in that it shows end behavior of a rational function. So here's a couple things you need to know. First, you can't have both a slant and horizontal asymptote. Now, the second thing is that slant asymptotes can only occur when the numerator is exactly one degree higher than the denominator. The reason why is that as x approaches positive or negative infinity, f of x will act like a linear function. And that's really what a slant asymptote is. So you have some rational function whose numerator is exactly one degree higher. And in the long run of that function, it's going to behave like a line. And that's literally what the slant asymptote is. It's that line that the graph is going to act like. Uh, so let's look at this example. f of x equals x squared minus 1 over x plus 2. Now, the reason why we had to save slant asymptotes for now is because you had to learn how to divide polynomials. Because using division will show you where the slant asymptote is. So I'm going to use synthetic division in this case. I get x squared minus 1 over x plus 2 equals x minus 2 plus 3 over x plus 2. So these two things are equal. This isn't written as a ratio. This is written at, as, a, as a division. And so instead of looking at the end behavior of this version, I'm going to look at the end behavior of this version. So as x approaches infinity, I can think about what each of these terms does. Now these two you know, are, are going to be like x minus 2. And if I think about what happens with this term as x approaches infinity, I have 3 divided by some super huge number. That means this term is going to approach 0. So when I choose extremely large values of x, this remainder becomes completely irrelevant. And what I'm left with is a function that's going to behave like y equals x minus 2. So therefore, the slant asymptote of this function is actually y equals x minus 2. And so that's why it has to be exactly one degree higher, because the slant asymptote is really just some linear function. right? So when you divide it out, you have to be left with a linear and a remainder. And that's the only way to find a slant asymptote, that's is to do this division, ignore the remainder, that's your slant.